What's going on guys, Matty here from dclblogger.com. Welcome to, to, to this tutorial set. Um, we're gonna be going through the A to Z of the NFT world, um, but you know, I'm gonna be going through a kind of macro outlook, so from the start, how it all began, etc., etc. And um, it's gonna just be a free set of tutorials, so if anyone wants to get involved, you can uh, really quickly just kind of skim over things. Um, hopefully it'll take you like a couple of hours to go through these tutorials and you'll get a really good idea of what's kind of happened in the past. Um, I can't really, this is not predictions of what's going to happen in the future. It's mostly about what's happened in the past, right? So in this video, I'm going to be going through like what an actual NFT is. Um, and this is a question where I've been asked quite a lot. It's very difficult to answer, especially to people that don't, um, that aren't really into blockchain, right? NFT stands for non-fungible token. And first, I think it's it's best to, to go through what fungible even means. So a non-fungible token, okay? What is fungible? Fungible means that two items are equally tradable in value. So you can see US dollars, one US dollar equals another US dollar, no matter whatever that note is. Even if the note's cut in half, you can stick it together, but it has the same value. One rice bag or corn, corn bag of the same weight has the same value as the other. You can freely trade that amongst another person. Um, you know, a handful of corn. If I say go to a friend and be like, hey man, I'll give you my rice bag for your rice bag, most likely he'll say yes. It has that fungible ability in it. It's an economic term, right? Term, right? Non-fungible means that two assets are different. Um, for example, um, if, anyway, back to Bitcoin or fungibility. So two Bitcoin, one Bitcoin equals another Bitcoin. So cryptocurrencies are fungible. Um, this whole idea of non-fungible is kind of been played around with in the past past but you know that's where crypto kitties kind of blew this out of the water so two crypto kitties um non-fungible wise um you can see even gold bars so gold bars are also fungible right oil barrels but you get the point basically two items that can be that are the same look the same do the same thing and they can equally trade them amongst each other that process is called fungibility now non-fungible are Assets that like I, one house is not equal to another house. One painting is not equal to another painting. If I have 50 paintings, I, I can't go to a friend and say, hey, I'll swap you my 50 paintings for your 50 paintings. It doesn't work like that. Each asset is different. Each house is different. Each crypto kitty is different. Each digital art piece, vi digital video, um, whatever it is, these assets are different. I can't freely trade them. So that is called non-fungible. Okay, it's non-fungibility. So non-fungible token is a asset that is not freely tradable. Sorry, it's not that it's not freely tradable. It's not, each asset is different. So each asset has a different value. One NFT could be a land, one NFT could be a crypto kitty, one NFT, NFT could be a really rare crypto kitty, one could be a really common crypto kitty. So an NFT is a token that lives on the blockchain, represented by a blockchain, kind of like a receipt. An NFT is a receipt to this digital asset. So um, back in the day, we never had a way of giving these receipts out. So now because they're on blockchain, they live forever. They're immutable, meaning no one can tamper with them. They're publicly verifiable. And you can see an example of all the NFTs here. Um, you've got some game items like Axie Infinities. Um, you've got some cards that are all represented by NFT tokens. Digital land that's represented by NFT tokens. You're going to have content that's represented. Chests that are represented by nft tokens or in this case it's an erc20 but it spits out nft tokens when you open these card packs um and you keep going down this article is more about trading so you can i i do encourage you guys to read it this is my blog dclblogger.com i go through a little bit more about what an nft is if you kind of want to wrap your head around this again you know it's digital arts it's all this kind of stuff so on the back end what does it look like on the back end it kind of looks like this where you can see all the ERC20 tokens here. So I bought some sand tokens, cryptocurrency. I bought some land, um, mana cryptocurrency, some USD tether cryptocurrency. Someone sent me some bones cryptocurrency. Thank you, buddy. Um, DAI, etc. So these are all fungible tokens. But if you go to the ERC721, which are the NFT standard on Ethereum, you can see all of my non-fungible tokens. Um, ERC721 is just the standard that Ethereum uses to classify the non-fungible tokens so i don't really want to go into the back end you know you know maybe you're an artist that's watching this it's not really that important in the sense of you don't really want to know you i don't know how deep you guys want to get into the tech but you can see here everything's time stamped um you can see um you know you can see who sent me what um 
which wallet address sent me what so you can verify that all right well this specific super rare piece came from ferocious you can verify that because it came from ferocious's wallet um the token id is this so when you go to super rare it'll identify the token id and it'll tell you well that id represents this token and if i pop up by metamask you can see um you know this this shows you all the fungible tokens so it shows you i have two ethereum in cryptocurrency but this exact metamask wallet is where my nfts are also stored you can't see them at the moment but the metamask basically spits out or that allows you to engage in your wallet so what you see here on the desktop is my wallet what's going into my wallet etc but i can engage and buy more and do things like transact buy sell send to someone nfts and cryptocurrencies using my metamask um if you go to nonfungible.com they go through nft sell and this is why everyone's going to go, going crazy about them because the last seven days you can see axie infinity had like three hundred thousand dollars worth of sales these are not that much sales volumes compared to the broader market but for us in the nft space it's quite a lot it's a lot of momentum so you can see here um you know this site's really new i'm still fixing it up the the, uh, the what's it called the data isn't that ac that accurate so i have a lot to fix but you can see the average price for these fox masks have been almost a thousand dollars same with these eight bit christmas sweaters at you know i think it's like 10 to fifteen thousand mana so if you get that nft which are those wearables you can actually wear them in decentraland so you can do different things with your nfts you can play them in games like those cards but in this case these wearables they represent um, items that you can wear in Decentraland. So this specific mask is one of the very early first masks that Decentraland ever released. I think there's only like 40 or 50 of them. There's about six different masks. You can see here, there's a couple on the left of the of these killer masks, etc. And I can put them on. And just like in RuneScape, you can walk around with rare items. Well, you can do the same in Decentraland, except these, these items and their rareability um, the scarcity is kind of um, verified on the blockchain. They're owned on the blockchain, etc., etc. So the blockchain is enabling you to. This is a public database. So traditionally, what we had is like RuneScape had all this data themselves. They didn't really publish um, all of this data, right? And you don't see who sends who what and all that stuff. But they have that. But this, because it's public, everyone can kind of verify who owns what, which artist is legit, etc. That's why NFTs, just the tokens that are non fungible on blockchain, just makes so much sense. And they've blown up quite a lot. Like there are a couple of industries that are buzzing. Um, there's only four of these Christmas sweaters, 10 of those hats, um, nine of those barbarian pants, 10 undead pirate skeletal things. Um, yeah, just ignore those percentage changes. It's not very accurate. I have to fix certain things. The, the data is not that accurate, but you can just see um, what's been going on, right? And all this data is made available. You can even see how day, how old it is, how much average price it was for, etc. And all these being mythics, they're all quite rare, right? So in the last seven days or last month, you can see um, this one has this 52 of these, um, 327 days old, almost a year old. Average price is about 10,000 mana. Again, I don't know if this is 100% accurate. I'm still kind of fixing the, the code with this with a friend of mine. But basically, this is how the NFT world works. You can get assets in different projects. So in this specific case, it's wearables. But like I said, you can get cards. And they go up and down in value based on demand. So if, as an NFT investor, you're looking for these projects that are growing in demand, in value. And Axie Infinity, these, these assets that I have, these mystic axes, um, they're also going up in value because the user base is increasing. Um, so you can see all the different NFT projects I'm in on the left. Um, some super rare art, um, collected some super rare art. I've got, got art from Maker's Place. Um, Nuggets News sent me his first like 10 pieces that he made, which is pretty cool. Because if Nuggets News becomes like the Prime Minister of Australia or something, I can say that I have his NFT. <laughs> um, well, his first NFT. You can see I have more art. Um, you know, these are all my uh, NFTs in my, in my OpenSea wallet and they all represent different, different things. And they all do different things in different games. So like with NFTs, because they're tokens, you can take them across metaverses, or, sorry, across different projects. So if Axie Infinity, um, you know, those axes that you buy, maybe some other project comes by called Axie Infinity, um, you know, racing. And they'll say, hey, you know, we're a community project. We're making a racing game for Axie Infinity. We're gonna accept your tokens and whoever owns Axie tokens, you can use them in our game 
um, if you just bring them over. So we can just take those tokens there and bring them over and play that game. They don't have to redo a, a launch for tokens because we already own those Axie tokens. Those tokens are transferable on the blockchain. Or you can take them around with you with MetaMask. So because I'm logged into my MetaMask, it picks up that I am in the world. It picks up my wearables because it connects the wearables to what's in my address in my wallet. And, you know, it says, all right, Maddie, well, your name's Maddie or DCL Blogger. You're wearing these clothes. You can change them into the tokens or these NFTs that you own. And it's that MetaMask wallet, which is on the top right on the Chrome browser. You can see a little fox face that's doing that. Okay. It's kind of connecting wherever I go. It's called Web3. Wherever I go, it enables this stuff to happen. So Rarible, again, as an artist, you're probably like, well, what can I do? Well, as an artist, you can submit your art to Super Rare. Um, you know, that's why a lot of artists, um, whether they be musicians or art artists themselves that do digital art, they're getting involved because suddenly they can make art, make them into an NFT token and sell them on projects like Super Rare. So if you scroll down, you can see I purchased this one for 8 Ethereum from Manta. Um, previously it was 7.7 .7 Ethereum from which Manta bought. Um, I really like this piece. I think Marco Matt is going to do really well. And you can see, you, you can even record, this picks up that I own it because it connects it to my wallet. Um, again, with app, with Rarible, you can go here, you can even choose, you can make your image into an NFT. You can fill all this stuff out. Um, cool thing is you can even put like little codes and things so it can even be a ticket You can even make a ticket here with which unlocks a code to like a webinar or something um, or Mint base does a similar thing. So they were like storefronts that you can make membership music. They're a little bit more uh, In depth, so they're really cool to play around with you can see Somnium space use them to mint their tickets for their um, Take me to your burn show where you could buy the tickets to um once you have the ticket, you can go in there and show that you have the ticket in your wallet and you'd be able to go into the show. So, you know, you can do so much with NFTs. They can be so much. And we're really just experimenting this year and the last couple of years with like little use cases, uh, little things going here and there. And, and it's just so great to see what can be done because we're at such uh, a baby stage of this industry.